Hey, welcome to lesson number five. Now, uh, this first example we already did in class, but um, I'm going to run through it anyways. What we were looking to do was, um, we're, we're looking at comparing the graphs y of f of x and y is equal to a f of x, where a has to be greater than zero. In this case, a is equal to three. And so if I were to write this as equation, this would become y is equal to three times four minus x squared. And if we were to graph this, we're going to get a graph that looks something like this. Now, if we're to describe, what, describe what's going on here, we have a vertical stretch. And this vertical stretch is going to go about the y-axis, or sorry, the, uh, the x-axis. And it's going to be by a factor of 3. And with the the values of x or the x-intercepts, there's not going to be any change. There's going to be no change here. And all my and my y-intercept here is going to be multiplied by 3. So if we were to examine part 2 here, if we were to write an equation which represents y equals 1 half f of x, we're still dealing with the same equations, but instead we are multiplying it by a factor of one half. And so my new graph is going to look something like this. And uh, the, the general sketch is that there's going to be a vertical stretch about the same axis, so about the x-axis. And that's going to be by a factor of one half. And again, there's not going to be any change for our, our x-intercepts, but our y-intercept, we're going to have a change by multiplying it by 1 half. So if we were to compare, compare the graph of y of f of x to the graph of y equals a f of x results in a, in a vertical stretch about the x-axis, and by a factor of whatever a is going to be, in the first case it was 3, and in the second case it was 1 half. So on the next page, what we're looking for now is the value of b of x. All right, so last time we were looking at a of f of x, but now we're looking for y is equal to b, or f of b of x. So write an equation which represents y equals f of 4 of x. And so since we were working with our original function, this is going to become, well, I should write y is equal to the square root of 4 minus 4x squared. And if we were to rewrite this, it would look like this. y equals square root of 4 minus 16x squared. All right, and so using a, gra a graphing calculator to sketch this, what will it look like? Well, if, we, if you type this in your graphing calculator, it's going to look something like this. And now, what's happening is we have a horizontal stretch occurring. So the horizontal stretch is going to be about the y-axis this time. And here is by a factor of one quarter. And so, what are we doing to the, the x-intercepts? Well, to the x-intercepts, this time we're multiplying those by one quarter. And the y-intercepts, there's no change. So they're going to remain the same. Now if we look at this, initially we are at 2, but now we're, we're at 1 half. And so what we did was we multiplied 2 by a quarter to get here. Now I'll write an equation that represents y is equal to f of one third of x. So we're still working with the same equation. Y is the square root of four minus one third x squared, which we're going to get y is equal to the square root of four minus one ninth x squared. Now if I were to graph this, it's going to look something like that in your graphing calculator. Now again we're gonna have a horizontal stretch and again it's gonna be a horizontal stretch about our y-axis 
But this time, I'm at two, I'm, I ended at six. It's gonna be by a factor of three, not of one third. And the, the x-intercepts, we multiplied by three. And my y-intercepts, again, there's no change occurring on them. So compared to the graph y of fx, the graph of y of f of b of x results in a horizontal. So if we change that value b, it's going to be a horizontal stretch about the y-axis. And that's going to be by a factor of 1 divided by b. And the last one we're going to look at for today is comparing the graphs of y of f of x and y of a of f of x where a is less than zero. Actually, we're going to look at two more today. So we'll look at this one and then one after that. So if we are using this as, as f of x, we're an equation which represents y is equal to negative 3 f of x. So negative 3 f of x was x cubed minus 2x squared minus f of 5x plus 6. And if we were to expand this equation, we're going to get negative 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 15x minus 18. Now, if I were to plug this into my graphing calculator, um, I'm going to have a point that comes, this point down here is going to fall down to negative 24. And this point up here is going to go up to, looks like, 12, and I'm going to get a graph that looks something like this. Now, in general, or sorry, describe how the number negative 3 in negative 3 f of x affects the general sketch of y equals f of x. Well, it's going to be a vertical stretch. about the x-axis by 3, a factor of 3, and it's also a reflection and a reflection in the x-axis. And if I look at my, my x-intercepts of the graph, there was no change. Um, but if I look at my y-intercept, they, they were multiplied my y-intercept, sorry, multiplied by negative 3. Now, compared to the graph of y equals f of x, the graph of y equals a of f of x, where a is less than 0, results in a vertical stretch again about the x-axis. And by a factor of the absolute value of a together with a reflection again in the x-axis. And so I am going through this video a little quicker than usual, but uh, remember you can slow us down or you can also just uh, pause anywhere you like. So next question, the graph of y equals f of x is the same, uh, same uh, function we're working with, but this time we are looking for the, where the value, value of b is less than zero. So that's the value that's directly affecting our x. Now, this time it's going to be f of negative one-third of x. And so if I even put this into my equation, this is going to become negative one-third x cubed minus 2 times negative one-third x squared minus 5 times negative one-third x plus 6. And so all I did was for every value of x, I input a negative one-third x. And what we get is negative 127x cubed minus uh, 1 third is 1 1 ninth times 2 is going to be negative 2 over 9x squared plus 5 over 3x plus 6. Now, if I were to graph this, I'm going to get something that looks like like this oh and close to this this doesn't come up here too much it goes more like that so ignore this part of the line it's this is what my graph is looking like 
So again, just ignore that chunk there. Now, um, what happened here? Well, we had a looks like a horizontal stretch, and that's going to be about my x-axis, or it's not x-axis, my y-axis by a factor of three, and my reflection. Well, if, if I look at this, this reflection is going to be across my y-axis. Oh, sorry. And reflection across y-axis as well. And so my, my x-intercepts, those are going to be multiplied by 3. And the x-intercept of the graph, again, or sorry, the y-intercept, there's going to be no change. And so if, I, if we complete the statement, compare the graph of y equals f of x to the graph of y equals f of b of x, where b is less than 0, results in a horizontal stretch about the y-axis together with the reflection in the y-axis.